Hello Earthquake fans and Earthquake haters. In 1964, a big earthquake killed four people in the state of Oregon. Before I tell you more about that, I will let you know that the cities of St. Louis, Missouri and Memphis, Tennessee are close enough to the New Madrid Fault that if there is a magnitude 8 quake on the New Madrid Fault, there's a good possibility that 90% of the old brick buildings in Memphis and St. Louis will either fall down on their own or they will have to be torn down following the quake. Brick buildings do not stand up well to earthquakes. But back to the four people killed in Oregon, 1964. Did you think I said there was an earthquake in Oregon that killed four people in 1964? I did not say that. That same earthquake killed 12 people in the state of California. The earthquake did not happen in Oregon. The earthquake also did not happen in California. It happened in Alaska, which is north of California and Oregon, a great distance north. But it was a big enough quake that it caused a tsunami, which killed four people in Oregon and 12 people in California. The tsunami also reached Hawaii and Japan, but did not cause any major damage there. You might hear someone say, well, if it's my time to go, it's my time to go. If I'm in Southern California and an earthquake comes along and I decide instead to move to uh, the Midwest, well, maybe I'll be killed by a tornado. If it's my time to go, it's my time to go. But that shows very little thinking because what if it is not your time to go? If you have time right now to prepare for an earthquake, possibly by moving somewhere, then uh, think about it at least. You don't have to rush. This uh, video is not uh, to make you panic. This video is to make you think. There are two main differences between an earthquake and other types of natural disasters. With fire or a flood or a hurricane or a tornado, you will get a little bit of warning. With an earthquake, you do not get a warning. I will show you some footage of the 1994 earthquake in Northridge. This is footage I took myself. I was in Van Nuys at the time of the shaking and it was a real heavy shaker and about 50 people were killed. The other difference between earthquakes and other types of natural disasters is that when a tornado or a hurricane or a fire or flood is over, it's done its damage, it doesn't come back. When an earthquake stops shaking, it gets ready to start shaking again. If you have an earthquake of 8 magnitude at 6 a.m., you may have an earthquake of 7 magnitude at noon. You might have another 8 magnitude 6 months later or a year later. And anything over 5 magnitude can be a killer earthquake. If you have a single family home made of brick and an 8 magnitude earthquake occurs either right underneath you or nearby, there's a good chance your house will still be standing when the shaking stops, although you will have cracks in the exterior brick. A lot of bricks will be missing. If you have a brick chimney, that will probably be destroyed. Your plumbing pipes will be torn apart. None of your plumbing will work. Not the sinks, not the shower, not the toilet. If you have natural gas being piped into your house, there's a good possibility those pipes will be torn apart, and unless you have an earthquake resistant gas meter, you could have a fire. If your house shifts off its foundation, it might have to be torn down and rebuilt. All the windows in the house will probably be broken. But your house will still be standing most likely, unless you live next door to a very tall brick building. Any parking structure is a bad place to be when there is a big earthquake. Also, do not work on your vehicle, underneath the vehicle, when it is resting on jacks. If you live in earthquake-prone territory, do not trust any underground parking. 
If you live in an area known for its earthquakes, an eight magnitude earthquake will probably bring down all the parking structures. And a 6.7 is enough to bring the apartment building crashing down on top of underground parking. This is May of 2016 when I am recording this video. I will predict that within a couple of decades we will have the ability to predict earthquakes with some accuracy, but as for right now that's uh, not possible. But we can say that certain areas are likely to have earthquakes within the next decade, two decades, three decades, whatever. And Vulnerable areas of the United States include Southern California, which includes Los Angeles, which could have a 7.1 or 7.2 earthquake right under Wilshire Boulevard. And of course the San Andreas Fault in Southern California could rupture with an 8 magnitude quake. And that would affect cities like Barstow, San Bernardino, Bakersfield, even Las Vegas. In San Francisco, an earthquake of 8 magnitude is not out of the question because it's happened in the past. Farther up, uh, going north along the coast, in Washington and Oregon, an earthquake of 9 magnitude is expected sometime in the future because it has happened in the past. The New Madrid Fault, which would affect Missouri and Tennessee, especially cities like St. Louis and Memphis, they could be devastated by a, a quake of eight magnitude and not just one but several over a period of a year or two. And the Yellowstone uh, potential for a volcanic eruption, while very slight, that uh, could possibly put an end to life on planet Earth for about half of the oxygen-breathing creatures but uh, that is not expected anytime soon. Earthquakes can happen in any state in the United States, in any city. If you live in a populated area, highly populated area, and you know earthquakes are possible, there are some things that you should have on hand, things that you will need for when that earthquake comes. Have your clothing nearby the bed so if it happens during the night, as it often does, you can get up, get dressed, and go outside. You want to have your shoes there in the bedroom because you might have to walk through an apartment or house filled with broken glass. You also want to have food and water stored away for a couple of weeks. The tap water, after a big earthquake, 7 magnitude or greater, you will not be able to drink water from the tap for at least two weeks all the sediment and uh, rust scaly deposits uh, in the water lines will be broken loose by the shaking and it takes a while to get water back to normal and you might not even have plumbing pipes in your house after a big quake. In addition, you will want a magnifying glass and the reason for that, uh, just in case you run out of matches, you're in an area where it gets cold at night, you might want to start a fire, and I won't go into detail on that. But uh, you'll also want to have uh, diapers 
for the kids if uh, necessary and formula and uh, prescription medicine.